Well, thanks for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E as we continue with the conversations that this morning. And into our health slot we go now in a society where the topic of sex is still very much taboo. Discussions around sexually transmitted infections are even less prevalent. This morning we seek to really buck this trend and we'll be talking STIs. And as Dr. Marlon McKay says, it's not necessarily the best word to use STDs. We've got Dr. Marlon McKay joining us in studio. Now, you know that this is the time that we open up balance to you at home to, so that you can ask the doctor anything and especially if it is related to STIs um, or sexually transmitted infections and you want some help this morning you can even remain anonymous for the uh, purpose of this conversation so be sure to give us a call on 11 alternatively 1620 we missed you hi hi okay nice so STIs, STDs, etc. You were talking to me a little bit off air saying the fact, you know, we don't necessarily like using sexually transmitted diseases anymore. In fact, we all categorize them as sexually transmitted infections. Yes. Tell us about that. Okay, so, so just the word disease always has some bad connotation. No one wants to be labeled as having a disease. Mm. And that can even uh, go to diabetes, for instance. So we say diabetes is a chronic condition. Okay, and so and the same thing with ST, STIs. Formerly it was called sexually transmitted diseases. We now call it sexually transmitted infections. And in, infections also carries a connotation that it doesn't have to be a lifelong label. Mm. It's an infection, which means that there's usually treatment available for it. Yeah. And therefore one can either cure it or keep it under control, depending on which particular one you have. Okay, let's talk about the ones that you can cure and let's talk about the ones that you can keep under control because we we're even talking off air about cold sores. Like a normal, you see somebody with the cold sore and I heard that cold sores is actually a type of herpes. Yes. Yes. So, so, so with herpes, you get uh, two types. You get the oral herpes, which you can get around the mouth mm -hmm. and that can be transferred by a contact droplet spread, kissing, hugging. Okay? Kissing and hugging? Yes. So, almost like so any kiss exposure to the virus, especially when there's an active blister okay. on the skin yeah. and, you trans and you have direct contact with an individual, mm. that virus can then be transferred. And that's herpes? And that's herpes. Type the oral, 1. Yes. The oral type. Which is not necessarily tra sexually transmitted. Then you get Ooh. type 2, mm -hmm. which is the genital herpes. And this is where you can get itchiness, just sometimes a discharge or blistering around the vaginal area. Okay, so, okay. It's bl so you, that will is a you will know because you will be uncomfortable because it will be itchy you and you'll have blisters. It. You will feel it. I got you. It can then be treated. The problem with, with uh, herpes infection is because it's viral, we cannot cure it. So the, you can suppress the virus. It can then be dormant and lay dormant for a long, long time. Mm. But if you have sexual intercourse during the active phase, when you have active blistering, you can then transmit it again to somebody so else. So then if, it's, if, you, if you have sex... Um, while it's dormant, you don't transfer it? Not, no. Oh, I got you. So okay, so during we, that active phase. During the active phase. We're with Dr. Marlon McKay. You know that it's always a topic of conversation when it comes to ask the doctor. You get to ask the doctor anything. Give us a call. We want to hear from you this morning. 11 1447 1620, alternatively 1742. Our lines are definitely open to you as well. Those ones that can be um, cured. Okay, so you talked about herpes, right? What are some of the other symptoms that we need to know? Um, and I'm just thinking about covering everything because we can't cover everything yes. today. What are some of the symptoms? What am I displaying if I know that or that will indicate that I've got some form of an STI? Okay. So I think we must first clarify it's normal to have a vaginal discharge. Okay. Okay. It can be what we call physiological. In other words, it can vary with the cycle, it can vary with stress, um, and you, most women will know that they have what is a normal discharge for them. Okay. So it's usually clear, non-smelly. However, when you do get a vaginal discharge, that is different to your normal one. So it's usually more. It's usually, it may be thicker. It may be discolored, so yellow or brownish. So it yellow, brown, smell. bad. Smell, bad. Yes. Okay. Low abdominal pain. There may be bleeding outside of the period. Okay. Maybe pain associated with sex or after, during sex or after sex. Those indicate, those symptoms tend to indicate that you have an abnormal discharge. Um. And an abnormal discharge is usually associated with, an, with a sexually transmitted infection. Okay. Ranging from, for instance, gonorrhea, uh -huh. uh, chlamydia, trachomatis, 
and, and, uh, and, uh, and other bacterial infections. Okay, and then when we're looking at, and we're going to be taking some of the Facebook comments, what I need to do is basically get onto Facebook and be able sure. to open the, the Facebook account. So while we're, we're talking, I'll be trying to get onto Facebook again and give you some of those uh, um, uh, questions that we've got uh, from our uh, callers as well. So you say, uh, from the male perspective, and Godfrey, I see you, I know that you, you're on the line, you're waiting to get your point across, but let's talk about um, on the other side of it, for men now, for what are the symptoms? So for men, again, it will be a discharge from the penis, burning when they pass urine. Burning when they pass urine discharge and sometimes we may even get a sore or an ulcer we could talk about genital ulcer disease so an ulcer ulceration a sore that can happen on the penis on the head of the penis on the can, head of the penis on the penis, on the penis, penis itself know. on the shaft of the penis and that can also indicate an sti okay. yeah, libido libido. No libido yeah so there's a, there may be a, there's a, a number of causes and the first thing you'd want to exclude is a, a medical condition such mm. as testosterone deficiency syndrome, okay. low levels of testosterone. So that would af affect your ability to have an erection and one's libido. Oh, got you. Then there are other non-medical things like stress and anxiety and performance anxiety. So you, you fail once and then you're scared or anxious about performing the next time. And so it can affect that. So what must they do to so get help? So look, a doctor needs to assist there. Got you. Okay, just to make sure that there's no chronic illnesses, diabetes, hypertension, smoking, for instance, mm. um, testosterone levels, and then having excluded that, look at non-medical or non-organic and psychological causes of it. That every time you have sexual intercourse with your partner, you can transmit that infection to him. Mm. Secondly, for women, very, very important, can cause a serious condition called PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, where the disease spreads higher up, the infection spreads higher up, and involves the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and even the ovaries. Systemic infection can be quite serious. And then thirdly, and most importantly, infertility. Mm. It can harm the organs of reproduction to the extent that you may not be able to have children. So sure. this is very, very important why you have to diagnose it and treat it effectively. Arthur asked a question, um, males, right, in males, how long does it take for one to notice that they are infected? So it depends on the type of infection, which particular organism is involved, but generally seven to ten days, even up to two weeks. Two weeks. After the exposure or after sexual intercourse, you will notice something different, a burn on the urine and sometimes a discharge from the penis itself. Okay, so there'll be a burn? Discharge, and then another one asks, can I, oh, here's an interesting one, uh, Simbarashis um, Hlanga saying, can I, uh, can an STI affect a baby inside of the mother's womb? So let's say that the, yeah. by the time of conception. So, so, some, so some of them can be born, can be, can be affected to the extent that at the time of birth, you have a, what you call a congenital infection, mm. congenital syphilis, for instance, congenital chlamydia. So they can present at birth. So the infection took place during the pregnancy and it affects the baby at birth and the baby is literally born with that type of infection. Then what Aff happens? Affected, can affect the eyes, can affect the organs. But then you just have to treat mum and baby. But it must be recognized early enough. Okay, so uh, very lastly, what do you recommend? If somebody suspects that I've got, uh, as you said, you mentioned the symptoms there, etc. Itching, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, irregular discharge, smelly discharge. Uh, what were you saying? A burning sensation as well as itching there. Yes. What must I do to get help? Please don't go to the chemist and look for something. Look for a quick fix. Get okay. to your local clinic or get to your GP to do, who can take a good history, ex especially your sexual history, mm. who can then examine you um, thoroughly and then affect the appropriate treatment because this is not guesswork you have to know exactly what organism is involved what yeah. infection it is and treat it with the correct medication whether it be it antibiotics or antivirals in order in order to affect a cure so to protect you and also to protect your partner